Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, gosh, friends, we've been hearing the report. Started off with Hal Turner talking about more than Russians uh, were killed in Ukraine in one day. One day alone. Uh, well, I happened to be in a meeting there with uh, people in Washington to find out exactly what was going on. And what was really strange is I was told that there has been a quarter of a, excuse me, yeah, no, what was it? I, think, I want to say that the, the, the combat losses in Ukraine since the war began has been, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a quarter of a million, 250,000 deaths have been recorded already. Now, in this article right here, they're claiming the total of Russians that have been killed in the battle so far are 102,000 Russians killed in this battle alone. Well, if there's been a quarter of a million, that would put at about 148,000 Ukrainians or combination between Ukrainian, American, uh, UK, Polish forces, and whatever other mercenaries they've brought inside of Ukraine that have been killed in this battle thus far. That's a lot of death, friends, a lot of dead people. And, uh, and, and quite frankly, if you look at the information, I want to play some things here for you here. Let me just get to the right sources here. I'm going to play this little clip right here from uh, Ozolio News, uh, one and a half million subscribers on this channel here. I want you to hear what he says right here. And then I'm going to share some things with you that I was told about that I was able to find some source information to back it up with. Let's listen into what he has to say here real quick. In terms of military personnel, military equipment against the Ukrainian army. Experiencing these losses causes the morale of the soldiers in the Russian army to drop. It causes the soldiers whose morale is low to not fight strongly in this war. As a result, the Ukrainian soldiers gained the upper hand against the Russian soldiers. The Ukrainian army has recently conducted major military operations against the Russian army in the Donetsk region. As a result of these operations, Many soldiers belonging to the Russian army were killed. According to the information received, the two-day military loss of the Russian army was announced as 600. To reach all actual news, fast and reliable worldwide. All right, there. So 600 Russian soldiers were killed. Let me tell you how they were killed, though. Like Hal Turner brought out, they were killed because, like in the case of the Wagner Group, they were killed in a hospital. No lie, killed in a hospital. Uh, I'm going to show you a clip of that if I can find the video on that one there real quick. Let's see if I, well, actually, I took the video down already. I apologize for that. Uh, it was actually just a short Russian clip there where they were talking about them being killed in the hospital, not specifically the Wagner Group, but where the uh, Ukrainians had launched an attack on a hospital. The second place was a barracks, a barracks that was housing, housing Russian troops over inside of Ukraine, and they dropped the bomb over on them and killed them as well. So it was a total of about 600 uh, Russian soldiers that were killed in one day. Now what they don't tell you though is Russia's retaliation. Russia did launch a retaliation. And as I was being told about the retaliation, I, I was told that the United States and NATO partners had set up what they are calling safe zones inside of Ukraine. But in reality, they're not safe zones. They are military bases. That's exactly what I've been told they were. Russia targeted four of those military bases. And as the way it was put to me, they were completely wiped off the map. Wiped off the map is exactly the term that it was being used uh, about that particular, those particular bases in Ukraine. I have no idea of the death toll of that, but I know that it was in the thousands uh, of, of combined, like I said, Ukraine, Polish, uh, UK, American, whatever the case may be, soldiers were killed on the uh, Western side there. The other thing I was told about is that we have very little defense, even with the Patriot battery, battery system inside of uh, uh, Ukraine, it's, it's really no match. It's a, it's, I've been told it's an amazing system, but it's no match for what Russia is using. And Russia, according to this article right here on Ukraine.ru, says the caliber Eichlander and the daggers are what how the Russian army destroys the infrastructure of Ukraine. Well, in this case here, it's, whoops, sorry about that, guys. I got glue stuck in me, so 
I keep feeling it in different places that I forget I didn't see it at. Anyway, these Eichlanders that they're using there said that they can reach speeds of Mach 6, in other words, six times faster than the speed of sound. The missiles of this type are highly maneuverable, uh, which makes them practically in, uh, invulnerable to enemy anti-missile or anti-aircraft defense systems. And the most important feature is the adjustment of the target during the flight of the rocket. This allows the, the strike to maximize I, uh, accuracy. The Eichlander flies along a ballistic trajectory. Goes on to say that the rocket's engines work only in the starting segment, accelerating it to the maximum. Then the rocket goes into top trajectory point and starts descending without the participation of the engine due to the primary acceleration and gravity of the Earth. The maximum lifting height of the Eichner is about 800 kilometers. The maximum flight range is 500 kilometers, which we don't need to get into all the direction of that there. The point is, what was said to me, which this article kind of confirms that, is that the, the advantage Russia has when they're firing off a missile is its acceleration speed. When it's first fired off, its acceleration speed is enormous and it's extremely fast, much like what we have here. Now, of course, this is Russia firing off one of their uh, supersonic ballistic missiles and it just zooms away like at lightning speed. There is no match in NATO's forces that can knock down those types of missiles. This is why Russia gets an upper hand when it comes to those types of missiles that are being launched over there. Uh, so again, Russia has knocked out four U.S. NATO bases in Ukraine, totally as it was put to me, wiping them off the face of the earth. That was a retaliatory uh, attack. I've been told that this situation is going to escalate more and more. Uh, this here is on VZ.ru, another Russian news media here. Kiev and NATO received a strategic warning from Russia. In the coming year, Russian strategic aviation will increase participation in military special operations. The commander of the long-range aviation, Sergei Kovalash, announced powerful strikes against the armed forces of Ukraine with highly precision weapons. Experts warned that additional protection of strategic aviation airfields will be required. Um... Uh, up to the creation of the false runway network and the dummies of the missile carriers, what goals Ukraine will be priority for the Russian uh, strategist. Uh, now they go into what they're going to be using there, the long-range aviation, aerospace, Russian Fer uh, Federation, including the Tu-95MS, the Tu-160 strategic missile carrier bombers, Tu-22M3 long-range bombers, etc., etc., etc. So the point is, it's about to get really, really nasty. Now, here's another thing too, just to keep in mind. Russia, by the way, are all these wars, I shouldn't say Russia, but the wars that are going on are all smoke and mirrors. Just smoke and mirrors. It's to keep your eyes off of what's going on above your head. And that's something that can't be understated. I am putting together, if you're looking at the top of the screen, you're seeing biblical verses everywhere. Book of Revelation, the book of Luke, the book of John, uh, the book of Matthew, uh, the book of Genesis. I'm about to release, it's going to start over on Patreon, but I will bring it into our broadcast here for you to be able to see as well. I'm fixing to go into Planet X on a biblical scale like never looked at before something that the Lord had placed on my heart. And it was actually in regards, I was sharing information from Mike from around the world that he was speaking about. And when I shared that with the counterpart that I work with in Washington, because I'm on the Planet X, uh, I've been able to advise on that from ancient documents. They've, they've taken, they've asked questions of me and I've pr produced answers for them. But frustration level began to grow. And as it did, I got more information about Planet X than I'd ever gotten before. This is a system that comes from another dimension. You have to understand, space as we know it, or maybe I should say like this, just to kind of give you a little test, uh, a little, little taste, I should say, of what I'm going to be speaking about. 
Think about when our Heavenly Father created the heavens. And he also talks about being, you know, separated by, uh, we would say water, the oceans, whatever you want to call it there. There's separations in there. There's multi-layers of dimensions of other solar systems, you might say. Uh, entire universes, we would, is the way, right way to put it. And... When God created all of this, do you think that God would create a system that would cause another planetary system, like a binary system, to go crashing into our Milky Way galaxy? Do we really think that God is not capable of creating the universe to where it would work in perfect harmony and not have all these crashes in it? I think he's very capable of that. And I've told you guys over and over and over, Planet X travels in what they call the ether. That's, the, that's what holds dimensions together. It's in the edge of it, headed this way. But now I was told, and I, or not now, but a, a month or two ago, I was telling you guys how that they anticipate that it could pop out of the ether at any time. We're going to get into CERN. We're going to get into the seven hydrocolliders that I'm aware of here on the Earth and what their role is in this Planet X thing there. We're going to get into just exactly how biblical this really is. I'm going to share that with our friends on Patreon first there. Um, so if you'd like to help support the broadcast, Patreon's a great way to support this broadcast because it doesn't take very much to do so. A lot of of people just come in for only a dollar a month. You know, if God lays on your heart to, to give more, we greatly appreciate that because that is basically where the support for this ministry comes from. Uh, and we thank you for that. We really, from the bottom of our heart, we thank you for that. Yana's getting back into the battle once again. She started a channel on Odyssey. Uh, she's trying to get up two videos a week. Pray for her. I know it's very difficult for her still. Um, and some of her content will still air here on Israeli News Live, but her content is what caused her to nearly lose her life, me to nearly lose mine, and of course her father paid the ultimate price with his life. Um, won't be much longer that information will come out. Support the broadcast, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website, our mailing address, Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. We greatly appreciate your support, your love uh, for us and this ministry. And again, Patreon, support Patreon. We appreciate it. I'm trying to give you guys some great content there. Uh, this video, though, will end up being on the other platforms as well because uh, I think it's critical information that you need to be aware of. Um, not, not that it's going to change or alter anything. It's not that type of critical, but it's teaching. And I never like, I like teaching to always be available to everyone. So I will make it available to everyone as well. Maybe a day or two before I do that. But if you want to catch it before then, kind of like a pre-release type thing, it'll be on Patreon tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to record it in the morning. I, I didn't want to record it this evening because I want it to be top notch. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.